We're going to be demonstrating the Thomas test, which is a really powerful test because it can tell you at least five things. We're going to demonstrate that right now. So to set up, ideally, you're going to have your patient propped on the edge of the table, and we're going to help get them into the position off the back. Now with older adults, do we have to modify it? We do. I actually take their legs slightly off the side of the table and they're fully supine, and I can show that in just a moment. But the technically correct way to do this, so Corey, we're going to be, let's hug this leg up to your chest. Okay, I'm gonna help you rock to your back here. Good, and if they need a pillow, provide one. And you need to hold that leg really tight into the body, okay? Then I'm gonna to go to the other side, the side I'm testing. I'm just gonna bring it up, and then I'm gonna help passively bring it back down again, keeping it in line with the body. So what I'm looking for here is quite a few things. So I'm looking at the angle between the torso and the thigh, because that tells me the extensibility of the hip flexors, so iliacus and psoas. If I see any angulation here that is above zero, I'm going to get out my godiometer and measure it. So I'm going to show you how that's done. Are you okay in this position for a minute? Good. So my Access goes to greater trochanter, stationary arm to torso, and moving arm to lateral condyle. Corey actually doesn't have any angulation here, but if a patient's tight, it's going to go in this direction. So if the goniometer was like this, it would be documented as 20 degrees. And as the patient improves, it'll move towards zero or beyond into extension. So if the angle was down like this, that would be 20 degrees of hip extension, meaning flexible and normal, versus this is zero, that's Corey, that's a little tight, versus way up here, that would be documented as 20 degrees of hip flexion, which would be very tight in the hip flexor complex. I'm also looking for a few other things. So if this knee is coming out, like the shin bone is coming out, that tells me the rectus femoris is tight, and that can be also confirmed with your Ely test. So I can measure at the knee for rectus femoris tension. I'm going to come down here, lining up to the lateral condyle, the knee at the joint line, so technically inferior to lateral condyle. Moving arm, sorry, stationary arm, lined up to greater trochanter. Moving arm, lined up to lateral malleolus. So I can document this as my rectus femoris angle. And as it improves, it will be coming closer to the body here, closer underneath, closer to 90. I'm also looking for a few other things here. If the leg had come out to the side of the body, that tells me about my IT band complex and all of the muscles that attach to it. So go ahead and hold your leg there. We're gonna pretend that's your, your real compensation. So if that was tight, I need to measure hip abduction. So I'm going to come across the iliac crests, the ASISS with my stationary arm, my moving arm right through the center of the hip, on the axis, and then down towards the center of the patella. Now a lot of times you're not truly going to be able to get in on the ASIS, so you actually end up going a little bit higher and then kind of sliding in and then lining it up. So in this case, I'm starting with a red zero, and then the goni goes like this, so I'm reading red numbers. So that's 20 degrees of hip abduction, telling me about the overall IT band complex tension here. Two more things we want to show you. Are you okay in this position? Okay. If the leg goes out like this, so rotate, hold there. So if the foot is coming inward, so the hip's in external rotation, that's telling me the sartorius is tight, and then I can come down here, I can measure this angle. So stationary arm parallel to floor, axis center of patella, moving arm center of ankle, talocrural joint on the anterior side. So this one tells me that I have 18 degrees of rotation, telling me the sartorius is tight. Now if I saw it rotate the other way, internal, that's TFL tension. I can do a very similar measure coming down towards the floor. 
stationary arm to floor, access to patella, moving arm to center of ankle, and this is actually telling me that I have 10 degrees of internal rotation for TFL tension. So that's why Thomas is such a power test, is because you can measure so many things and get so much information.